So today I'm going to look at an inductive encoder. Uh, I guess it's spelled encoder instead of encoder. Um, this is a, a Zetlex. Uh, so there's a magnetic field and then a sensor. Um, anyways, you can, if you line up the words like that, uh, that would be the zero position. And you can see there's a, a circuit on here that will uh, when you power it with like zero to five volts, um, typical encoder voltage, maybe more, but um, the, you can get uh, clock and data to get the information out from the encoder or encoder. Uh, this is a SSI, but I'm not going to talk about SSI anymore because they have uh, BIS capability, uh, BIS3. I'm using the BIS3 here. And uh, we can see there's a cable and encoder parts. So that's kind of handy. So we can wire it up. Uh, I'm using a Copley drive. It could be a plus drive or a standard drive that works with the BIS-C clock and data. So we can check the data sheet. But when you, when you have things lined up and you turn the power on, that would be the zero position. Um, one advantage of the inductive encoder, of course, is you don't need to be a mechanical engineer to set the gap to the right value. It's, it's got a wide range of compliance. Um, so it's easy for me to, to use. I'm gonna turn it by hand. I don't have a bearing or anything. And I might get an encoder fault, which is expected when things come apart, right? Uh, you wanna know. Um, so I'll try not to induce a fault. If there's any kind of mounting and bearing, then you'd be fine. So let's take a look at um, some wiring information for this. So here's the Copley 26 pin uh, uh, male D sub connector for feedback. I've got the uh, plus five and, and ground for power. So brown is plus and black is ground. So there's, there's a, a, a black with a brown color on it. So anyways, um, there's a green for the data. Uh, data minus is green and data plus is black green. And in encoder, uh, the clock is plus is blue and minus is black brown. And then of course, don't forget the, the shield must find a path to earth. Pin one is the frame which goes to earth. I do not connect the shield to the encoder case because the encoder case could touch the motor case. Um, but they have the pin out here described for the BIS C, zero volts and supply. Um, they have uh, data A and B, clock A and B. And then this reset, I'm not doing any reset. I just turn the power on and let it do its factory thing. I don't, I don't like to have to reset encoders. So just don't wire that to the drive. Um, we can take a look at the uh, specification. The basic idea is the drive will send, uh, the drive or the master will send a clock signal master to the slave and then the slave will be reading the position and, and report that position as a data packet. And you got your plus five and ground. Um, as far as configuration goes, this says a clock frequency of uh, two megahertz. I, I've tested this at higher frequency and it's, it's fine. So maybe that's a little conservative. Um, base time, 20 microseconds. And so that must be for their update rate of position. Uh, they have to sample position. Uh, 30 bits, that's a lot of bits. There's some bits for CRC. Uh, uh, cyclical redundancy check with a polynomial. Um, 12 clock cycles, uh, processing time. So, um, so you got your MSB and your LSB, you got your data. Uh, this says 21 bits and some error and some warning bits. Um, this is trying to conform to the BIS standard here, but, uh, We'll have to shift things around a little bit and I'll show you that in the uh, CME configuration. 
So example for 18 bits of resolution, blah, 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 bunch of zeros. Um, this encoder is the BIS 3, not the 31. So it has a, a 0 to 40.95, 40.96, and then it wraps back to 0. Um, when we rotate it, it could go from 0 and then plus or minus, but um, that's just the counter in the drive. When you turn the power on, then you get the absolute position. And uh, then there's the, uh, the, the higher bit. Uh, I, I presume this is resolution. So we'll take a quick peek at the, uh, the concept of a magnetic field. And it's supposedly easier for mounting and versus an optical. Um, and I'm just getting that from the Heidenheim guys, inductive versus optical. So if you have, you know, you're trying to point at the moon, maybe you need more accuracy and precision. So you need the, the optical, although the counts per rev is pretty high in some of these inductive. So inductive encoders are not concerned with magnetic fields and also can handle very high levels of vibration or contamination while also providing additional accuracy over magnetic solutions. Um, okay, so it's not a magnet, it's an inductive field. There you go. And uh, here's the Heidenhain solutions, looks like a ammo or flux encoder. Um, for CME, you can see when I turn the power on, uh, I've got the position at zero. And as I rotate the encoder in the, uh, I did it. I knocked it off center. So you can see the fault detection work. But, uh, ever so slowly, I can go positive or minus, right? And uh, if, I'm, if I'm in the minus position and I reset the drive, that'll come up with, you know, between zero and 4096 or 4095, because it wraps at 4096. Um, oh, that came up as a negative number. That's interesting. All right. Well, we can run over here, but uh, we can figure this out later. Do a little reset here. Oh. Maybe I didn't turn the power off. Yeah. Anyways, um, following error fault. I'm, I'm not in a servo loop. Ignore that. So the, the purpose is just to get the configuration set at the moment. Um, I'll get back to homing. But uh, you can see it, it maintains an absolute position on power up with respect to the zero position. Um, just as an example, I'm saying the encoder is on the motor, not on the load. It's uh, 14 bits, uh, single turn, 16384. So that's a good count. There's no multi turns, and I have eight alignment bits. So this may explain why we go from, uh, so we have a 14 bits of position data plus eight alignment bits is 22 bits. I don't know where they came up with 21, but this works. So let's not argue with it. Uh, active low errors, error before warning data, and this is the position and then alignment and then status. So that's how the data is constructed. We'll update it to servo loop for position mode. If you're ever doing torque or current mode, you could update it to current loop, it's a little faster. One, uh, 2.5 megahertz is fine. I tested it at four megahertz, that worked too. There's a default setting, and we don't use the default setting. We check that box, okay? And uh, that's the configuration. And right now, there's no faults. We have a history, no active faults, a history of uh, latch encoder error. I'm going to clear that log. Encoder status. Okay, so I'm going to separate these. Ah! position went to zero, things are bad. And then um, let's take a look at, so we have an active latch fault, feedback error. I got a, a few feedback errors in there. And then let's look at the encoder status and it's not saying anything here. 
so it's just an uh, encoder fault. So no details about the fault at this time. Um, so that there's just one bit for fault, so that must just be an encoder fault. But good to know, uh, if you have an encoder fault, like things become full of water or mechanically separated, you can um, check out the encoder. Um, look at that, I'm turning it by hand and I'm not getting an encoder fault. So this is not a very tight mechanical system here. And again, I'll just do a reset and watch it work. Okay, so if this is the position you want to be zero and it comes up and gives you that position, you can see that the homing has not been referenced. So that's just what the encoder says is 528 on power up. If you don't like that, you can subtract 528. Um, and then you can do absolute immediate home, absolute active immediate home. Some maybe some new firmware has some new features in there, but uh, I'm going to save it and I'm going to execute the homing. Homing has been calibrated. Oops, I got to put a negative number there. Darn it. Home. Okay. Ah, there we go. Zero. So now, even though we wake up in that position, uh, when we reset the drive, it'll come up in the position we want to be zero. And that's not calibrated from the factory using any kind of reset. That's just, hey, this system, I don't like that zero that they give us when I mechanically connect things. I want zero to be over there. So on power up, we immediately do the homing and it's referenced. And um, ah, I forgot to save that. Put the minus in there again. Save it. Okay. And then now reset it. This is why people need technical support. Got to save the flash. And again, ah, there we're at zero. We're homed. The homing was executed on power up the reset. I'm going to turn it a little bit. Now the zero is elsewhere. Oh, let's clear the fault. And uh, this time it'll come up calibrated um, using where we set the offset with respect to where zero used to be. So whatever number it had uh, off when it read the encoder, subtracted this number, and really now we're at the new zero reference point. So we don't need to, I mean, homing is automatically done, and now you're referenced. So you could move to zero if you want. You don't have to. You could move somewhere else. Um, but this homing is done immediately and doesn't make a move. Okay. Well, thanks for watching uh, the Zetlex uh, BIS encoder.